Hello Year 7 and 8, it's Mr Quick here again. Uh, I'm going to take you through our second cook along practical which is a macaroni cauliflower cheese. Now I'll just start by saying if you don't like uh, cauliflower you could use um, broccoli instead or uh, peas and sweet corn. Uh, so it is a bit versatile in that. So uh, the other thing um, you could use um, it does say you can obviously use macaroni which is quite a small pasta but you could use penne or other types of pasta so don't feel like you have to go out and buy uh, specifically macaroni pasta although um, 500 gram bag from Waitrose was 75p um, so it is quite affordable um, okay so I'm going to take you through the practical I'm going to do the majority of the practical uh, on the visualizer I'm just going to start by saying make sure that you've got somebody to supervise you. We're going to be using the hob um, and the oven today, uh, so we need to make sure that uh, you've got supervision. And um, first thing I'm going to do is prepare myself for cooking. So I've got my apron on. Obviously, you might not have an apron at home, which is absolutely fine, uh, but you need to make sure you wash your hands, clean your work surface and got out everything that you need. I'm gonna take you through what you need on the visualizer, um, but first of all, I'm gonna go and wash my hands. Okay, so our hands are washed and we're ready to start our macaroni cheese. First thing we need to do is our mise en place. So mise en place means preparation and we're going to get everything that we need. Um, I've already prepared and weighed my ingredients out just to make it a little bit quicker. But that would be one of my first bits of advice for cooking. Always make sure that you've got everything prepared and to hand um, because it makes everything a lot easier. So I'll just take you through what you are going to need. So uh, first thing we've got a uh, small cauliflower. Um, if you're using broccoli, um, then you can obviously replace that or whatever vegetable that you want to use. I've got 250 grams of macaroni. Uh, as I said earlier, you could use um, a different type of pasta. So you don't have to use macaroni, that's fine. Um, next thing, 50 grams of butter for my roux sauce, my white sauce, 50 grams of plain flour, I've got 500 milliliters of milk, 150 grams of mature cheddar cheese, And I'm going to add, just as a bit of an optional extra, I had a bit of this leftover, so I'm using up some leftovers here, um, some sweet corn. Okay, the other thing you're going to need uh, is an oven-proof dish to cook your macaroni cheese in the oven. And you're going to also need a couple of saucepans. So uh, I'll show you on the visualizer what we're doing on the hob. But um, I've got two saucepans, so you could have uh, a large one and a medium one. Okay, so that's everything you, you need. Make sure you've got that um, yourself. You might uh, need to grate your cheese. Um, I showed you how to, well, we did that in the frittata, so hopefully just remember to keep your hand flat as you're grating so you don't grate your fingers. First thing we're going to do is to, so I've got a, a, a dish here. I've just showed, vid, videoed my how to cut an onion and knife skills. So um, I've got the offcuts of the onion here. I'm going to show you how to take the leaves off the cauliflower. So first thing that we're going to do is cut the base of the cauliflower off like so. That's going to remove the majority of the leaves 
and you can actually just snap them away the, the rest um, I could probably cut off a little bit more actually to cut down a bit closer to the bottom of the cauliflower okay so inside all of those leaves quite a small cauliflower this one um, wouldn't necessarily go for a massive one probably just be a little bit too much so snap those last few final leaves off until you're left with your cauliflower head okay and then from the inside carefully here remember our claw grip start cutting away around the root or the stem probably stem um, take that stem out there and then start separating out of florets now I don't like to have these too big I think um, works nicely if you've got nice small bits of cauliflower you can hear them snapping off I'm just going to cut this last one bridge here so I've got my cauliflower already there get rid of any waste try and try and work um, as neatly as you can I just find if you work tidily you tend to be more organized you tend not to uh, forget things as well okay so that's the cauliflower um, what I'm going to do now is uh, preheat my oven to 180 degrees Celsius uh, gas mark 6 and uh, I'm also going to put my kettle on to boil so that's going to be for cooking my macaroni I want to boil my kettle it's much quicker more efficient than boiling it in the pan um, just get an adult to help you with it um, if you're going to struggle to pour your water into the saucepan so I'm going to put the kettle on the oven on I'm also going to move the visualizer over so we can see the hob top because uh, majority of what we're doing today is on the hob so I'll, I'll move things around and I'll see you in a minute right so I've moved the visualizer around my kettle's boiled I'm going to pour in some boiling water I'm going to half fill this pan okay so that's half full um, I can always add a little bit more if I need to and I'm going to turn so I want to bring this up to the boil before I put my pasta in uh, so I'm going to go turn the hob on all the way up to begin with so I want to bring that up to a boil now for the for the benefit of the video um, I would I'm not going to put the lid on you can see that's steaming away a little bit um, but normally I'd pop the lid on and that will bring it to the boil a little bit quicker it's going to take a minute or two just to come to the boil in fact let's speed the process up put the lid on starting to get there okay so we see the steam science come what we're looking for in a boil is nice large bubbles bursting at the surface so we're not there yet so lid back on but i'm here stood by uh the hob um one thing to mention here this is the visualizer set at an angle so it's not very easy to see but my pan handle is coming off the side of my hob here so it's not coming off the front of the hob um, so i'm not in in danger of knocking it off it's coming off the side and that's going to make 
um, it's just a bit safer. So I want to be careful of, of that. So just whilst that comes to uh, the boil, I've got some salt here. Okay, so I'm going to put a pinch of salt in before I place my pasta in. Let's see how we're looking. Need the blue Peter moment here, where it's here's one I made earlier. Um, right, I'm just waiting for that to boil. So one thing to bear in mind here. Uh, is that pasta, if you look on the packet for the majority of pasta, they'll probably recommend a cooking time of about 10 minutes. Uh, so I, with macaroni cheese, I would probably cook my pasta for something like seven minutes. So I usually go for seven minutes set a timer uh, because I want it to be a little bit al dente. That means just to have, to have a little bit of bite. Um, so a little bit of a, a chew to it. Uh, that way, uh, when I cook it in the oven uh, as a macaroni, the full finished dish, I'm going to uh, not have real soggy, too soggy pasta. So let's try it slow, not as quick as my hob at home, right? Probably help if I turned it up on the other side. See here, I've got in school, we've got a dual zone hob. You can see that getting hot now. So, hopefully I'll go a bit quicker now. Apologies. If you're, if you're waiting on and you're watching, you can fast forward this a little bit. There we go. I feel like we're doing something now. Right. So, um, we can see the small bubble. So that's... That was, is not really what I'd call a boil. Okay, so we're waiting for big bubbles that burst on the surface. So we're getting somewhere near that now. You can see the bubbles getting a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're getting much bigger bubbles now. Right, so. So as I said, pinch of salt into the water. And then I'm gonna add my macaroni. Now, one thing I found with macaroni is it does have a tendency to stick. So I've got a wooden spoon here. Now what I'm oh, going properly boiling now. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit. Okay, just be careful with the steam as you're doing this. Right, just to prevent the water from splashing me when I'm pouring the pasta in. I'm just going to use my spoon here just to bounce that off so that it doesn't splash me. Okay, so that's the pasta in. You'll notice it's taking it, the water off the boil. So I'm going to give that a stir. Uh, you don't need to stir pasta all the way through, but stir it at the start and then after a couple of minutes. So I need to bring that back up, so turn that back up again. Let's back up to the highest temperature and see that's starting to come back to a boil. Right, there we go. So I'm going to turn that back down, set my timer now. That's seven minutes on the timer. Uh, so I'm going to just let that simmer for seven minutes. Just give that a stir. I can feel that was a little bit stiff into the bottom there. OK, right. So that is our pasta on. Um, what I'm actually going to do is to save myself some washing up. Um, after two minutes, I'm gonna add my cauliflower into the pasta. Okay, so I'm gonna cook them together. They're gonna get mixed together anyway, uh, later on. So just to save myself some washing up, I'm gonna cook my, pasta, uh, my cauliflower in with my pasta. Right, next we are going to make our roux sauce. So here comes my second, Pan. 
here we go, move the visualizer so you can see, Ooh, twist, hopefully you can see that. So again, got my pan handle uh, coming out to the side, not coming over the top. You get that, it's quite hard to do that. Okay, give the pasta a stir again. It's just simmering away there now. Okay, so, right. Um, Next, so I'm going to make my white sauce. I can do that um, whilst my pasta is cooking. So first thing I'm going to do is place my 50 grams of butter into my pan and then turn on the heat. So I'm going to melt my butter. Uh, it's worth mentioning here that I've got all of my ingredients to hand. So I've got my flour to hand here next to the, uh, the hob. I've also got my milk to hand here. Um, I've also been and picked up a whisk. Now we have in school a couple of different shaped whisks so it doesn't really matter which one you're going to use whatever you've got at home. Um, you could do this just with a wooden spoon solely but I like to combine a whisk and um, a wooden spoon and what I will say whilst this butter is melting that a, lot, a few people will probably make their roux slightly differently or their white sauce slightly differently. Um, working in a school, okay, we find that when you're doing something with 20 children uh, all at the same time, uh, you find that uh, there sometimes could be some misinterpretation of the, the instructions. Okay, so what I'd like to do is um, once I've added the flour, as you'll see in a minute, I add all the milk at the same time. Now I appreciate when you look at the instructions, um, it will say add the milk a bit at a time. Okay, but I find that I've got more errors that way from from pupils. Okay, so you can see the butter starting to melt. I'm actually looking at my timer now as I'm talking. There's uh, five minutes left on the timer, so I'm going to carefully add my cauliflower in to my pasta. Just show you that. Just be careful that you don't splash yourself. You can use your spoon here again just to drop that in. Uh, you might need to just turn that up a little bit, bring it back up to the boil. So turn that up a second. Give that a stir. So, uh, right, we're back on to. So this is just taking a little bit of time. Use the same wooden spoon to save me washing up. Okay, so you can burn butter, so probably good just to. I know it's uh, these are electric, I've got a gas hob at home, so it's a little bit quicker. Uh, some of these electric ovens, I mean, our electric ovens in school aren't the newest, so they do take a little bit of time to heat up um, and take time to warm the pan up. But you might find that this goes a little bit quicker at home but it's probably best to do this over a medium heat not too high so on this this dial at school it goes up to six um so i've got that on a four okay so we're just waiting for that You can hear me banging around in the background. I'm just getting out a colander. I've also got a sieve. I could do it in a sieve. We've got a nice big sieve here at school. Um, but colander is probably uh, the best way to drain. My pasta. So I'm going to place that in the sink. Right, we're getting there. Slow and steady. Being very slow. I apologise for, but um, we'll wait for all of this to melt. So we just want to keep, an, we need to be keeping an eye on this because, as I said to you, the butter can burn, and I don't want to burn my butter. Right. So, okay, as you can see, all melted there. Next thing I'm going to do 
take my flour, take my 50 grams of flour in. So I've got equal measures of butter and flour. And you need to stir that with your wooden spoon. And what you'll get is um, a dough. Keep stirring that. So this is where you want your medium heat. And okay. so here we go. So it looks a little bit like um, instant mashed potato, maybe kind of. A, um, and I'm just going to stir that. So what we want to do here is cook this for about a minute whilst we're stirring it. And um, that can help to prevent the roux sauce from having a starchy sort of flavour. So I've stirred that now. And here is where I'm going to go in with my whisk. Now, what a lot of recipes would say is add the milk and stir a bit at a time. I like to, personal preference, I'm not saying it's the perfect way, but I've just found in school this works better, is add all my milk in, in one go, and then I go in with my whisk. So at this point, um, right, my pasta time has gone off. So, it's kind of a crucial moment here that I'm whisking, so I don't want a lumpy sauce. So I'm scraping around the edges. So, how well that, you can see that on the visualizer, but I'm whisking. The visualizer is not the best camera here. But just trying to work around the edges, make sure I've not got any my butter and flour mixture right so um okay so i'm at a good point now uh, i'm really just going to quickly take carefully take my you might want to get an adult to help you here so i'm going to take my cauliflower and pasta mix off and drain the water in the sink you won't be able to see me do that but i'm just draining away that water there Okay, so I've drained the water and I've put it back in the pan just for ease. Right, back to my sauce because I need to. So, um, get this a lot in school. So, oh, my sauce isn't working. Um, it's not thickening. So, this is what we call a roux sauce is a starched, thickened sauce. So, what we're, we are, if we think about what's actually happening in terms of the science here, um, are starch granules in the flour, okay? are going to start absorbing the, the, the liquid, the milk in this instance. We could make this with water and you probably see it a little bit better. But um, they're starting to absorb that liquid. When they get warm enough, when they get hot enough, they will burst. Okay, those starch granules will burst and that's what will cause the sauce to thicken. Okay, so um, now, Obviously, that process, that gelatinization process, as we call it, uh, needs to get uh, to the right temperature. So we need to wait for our sauce to get to that temperature. So it, it's all dependent. So when I go, when we're doing it in a lesson, okay, I find that um, one pupil on the other side of the room has got their hob turned up to five um, and someone else has maybe got theirs on one or two. And they're saying, well, mine's taken ages, but it's just because it's not getting hot enough. If you followed the process correctly, eventually it will thicken. And I'm starting to see mine thicken now. Um, if I get my, I probably don't need my whisk at this point, so I'll get rid of my whisk. And I'll come back in with my wooden spoon. So you'll probably be able to see that easier now. So I'm just keeping it. We do need to make sure that we are um 
that we're watching this the whole time. What I don't want is this sticking to the bottom of the pan. So um, I've got this on a, still on a medium heat, so I'm on four on my, and I'm starting to see this thicken now. So just keep stirring that gently. Right, and I also want to have my cheese ready to go. So I'm gonna put my cheese to hand. Right, so we can see. Turn that. I'm going to turn mine up here. With if you're at home, I would just keep that on a nice even temperature. I'm just trying to speed it up for the, purely for um, for you to not have to watch a half an hour video when it can be a little bit shorter than that. Okay, so I can just feel that sauce is getting thicker. Um, those starch granules are starting to burst and thicken my sauce. Right, I'm actually turning back, back down. So we are nearly there. Okay, so that is my thickened starch sauce or roux sauce. Um, right, I've got my 150 grams of cheese now. What I'm going to do is add about two thirds of my cheese, maybe just over. Yeah, about two thirds. So two thirds of the cheese in to make my cheese sauce. So going to stir that until that cheese is melted. Again, that's going to further thicken that sauce for me. So just melting that through. Make sure you get them right around the sides of the dough. So as you can see, I'm keeping an eye on this all the time. Right, so my cheese has melted. My sauce now is much thicker. We can see. Okay, right. Next thing I'm going to do, I like to. You could, we could pour the um, sauce or the pasta into the dish and pour the sauce. I like to mix the two together. So carefully place the pasta and the cauliflower into the sauce and just give those a mix. I can actually turn my hob off. I'll turn my hob off now. I don't need to cook this anymore. So there you go. You can see that. There we go. Um, you could always add, we could be adding some different things to this. I mean, I could add some cooked bacon, some ham, some peas, um, uh, maybe some herbs and or some, some, I'm definitely going to add a little bit of pepper in there as well. I'm not really going to add um, any salt. I don't think I'll just keep a bit of pepper in there. Um, just because I find cheese quite salty or really, but stir that through and then I'm going to pour that into my dish. So I'm just going to move the visualizer. Okay, you will see that this is, it does look like it might be dirty. It's not. This is all on the bottom. The um, We just write a, a Camden College on it because uh, we don't want people taking them, not returning them. Okay, so. This is going to go into my dish carefully. Just trying to spread the cauliflower out as well. Scraping around. There we go. 
So that is our cauliflower macaroni cheese. 95% of the way there. I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do, I've got my pan here. You can see it's not burnt on, but it will stick if it dries. So I'm gonna put some hot water in there just to soak it into whilst I'm finishing off before I wash up, make it easier to clean. Right, then final touch, final touch before it goes in the oven i'm going to take my remaining cheese so my last bit of cheese and sprinkle that evenly over the top of my macaroni so this is a really cheap and affordable family meal it's very versatile um it's quite a good sort of comfort food it's just nice to have my son really likes likes it so uh quite a good one there we go so um, right now what we can can do with this we could uh, let this cool and freeze it down and cook it or it could go straight in the oven it would take sort of 15 to 20 minutes now if you think about it we've cooked the pasta we've cooked the cauliflower we've cooked the cheese sauce so essentially all we are wanting to do is to brown or, or melt the, and brown the cheese on top, make it nice and golden brown. So um, I can put that into the oven. I just need to brown the top of it. So probably 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. I'm actually gonna freeze this one. Um, so I'm gonna let this one cool and uh, freeze it. We don't need this uh, for tea tonight. So I'm gonna actually pop it away, freeze it down and use it as another meal uh, when I don't want to have to cook, so that's perfect. Right, there we go. Um, all I would say, okay, year seven and eight is um, make sure you go and do your washing up now, okay? Please don't leave a messy kitchen for your parents. Your parents will love you for making this for them to eat because it saves them from cooking, but what they don't want to do is have to deal with um, the kitchen being uh, an absolute mess. So go make sure you do this, go and put it, uh, you can put it straight in the oven if you're doing that and get on with some washing up whilst you're waiting.